Hi girls! Welcome back to Mrs. Kate's YouTube channel. I hope you all had a wonderful winter break and you're enjoying the new semester. Oliver and I are doing well. I hope things are going well with Miss Liesel and Miss Seema. I'm looking forward to being back at school with you guys soon. I miss you. So even though I'm not at school right now, I still wanted to keep up with our YouTube videos. So in this video, here are our learning objectives. After watching this lecture, you will be able to describe what life is like on the continent of Antarctica, and to explain why Antarctica is the coldest place on Earth. As you watch, please fill in your guided notes on page 13 in your new workbook. At the time I made this video, I was feeling generous, so all of your answers are clearly written in red for you. But still, throughout the lecture, you have to pay attention, because, of course, you will receive a homework quiz during the next class to check how well you understood this material. So let's get started. First, in order to understand what Antarctica is like, we have to understand some vocabulary. Almost all of the land in Antarctica is buried underneath glaciers. A glacier is a large mass of ice found near the Earth's poles or in a high, cold mountain valley. There are two types of glaciers. Alpine glaciers are found all over the world in high mountain valleys where it's very cold. These glaciers look like this. Here's one, and here's another. As you can see, these glaciers are located up in the mountains. In many places, you can actually hike up these mountains and walk on the glaciers. It's pretty cool. If you ever have the opportunity to walk on a glacier, I suggest you take it. So that's our first type of glacier, alpine glaciers. There's also a type called the continental glacier. These are glaciers that are found near the North and South Poles and these are the ones that are found in Antarctica. They look like this. Here you can see that this glacier is covering large areas of the land, hence it's covering the whole continent or being a continental glacier. Here's another picture, it's the same idea, they're huge. Another interesting thing about glaciers is that they actually move. In a future homework assignment, you're actually going to look at this um, and watch another YouTube video and you're going to see how these glaciers move. It's pretty cool. So as we talk about glaciers in this unit, these are the types of glaciers that we're talking about, continental glaciers. So Antarctica is covered with these massive sheets of moving ice. And you might wonder why sometimes you hear about glaciers melting in different places, and you might be wondering why these glaciers are so huge. Why don't some of them melt? And so part of the reason, part of the answer to this is that Antarctica is very, very cold. So we want to know, why is Antarctica so cold? What is it like there? In this lecture, we'll discuss three reasons. First, Antarctica is located very far away from the equator. Second, Earth is tilted as it rotates around the sun, and that makes a difference, as we'll see. Finally, number three, ice, which is white, reflects sunlight back into space. This is very interesting, so we'll talk about that too. So let's go to our first reason. The first reason that Antarctica is so cold is because this continent is located very far away from the equator. So the sunlight it receives is less direct and not very strong. It's like the difference between the sun at 8 a.m. and the sun at 12 p.m. When the sun is directly on top of us, it's much stronger. In July in Saudi Arabia, you want to go out and do all of your errands and things in the morning when it's still cool, because by mid-afternoon it's super hot and you're just going to want to stay inside and relax. So in your workbook, you have an image that looks like this. You can see here that in December, when Antarctica gets the most sunlight, it still isn't nearly as direct as being at the equator. And you'll notice that in June, Antarctica doesn't get any sunlight at all. This brings us to our second reason. Antarctica is so cold because Earth is tilted as it rotates around the Earth. I hope you've learned in other classes about how Earth rotates on an axis as it moves around the Sun. Just to give you a reminder, I want to show you a very short YouTube video that I think explains this phenomenon very well. And it also shows us what's so special about Antarctica and why this unique continent is actually colder than in the North. The Earth has seasons because its axis of rotation is tilted, a property it shares in common with some other planets in the solar system. 
It's tilted by an angle of 23 and a half degrees to a line perpendicular to its orbital plane, shown here in green. Incidentally, the Earth shares this orbital plane with all the other planets in the solar system. From Earth, we see this plane as an imaginary line that all the planets in the Sun seem to follow through the sky. We call this line the ecliptic. Here we see the Earth on the 22nd of September, the autumn equinox, when the northern part of its axis is not pointing towards or away from the Sun and day and night are exactly the same length. Next is the winter solstice, when the northern hemisphere is pointing away from the sun. Following on is the spring equinox, when day and night equal lengths again. Then we move to the summer solstice, the longest day in the northern hemisphere and the shortest in the southern hemisphere. So notice again how the northern hemisphere here, let me go back just a minute. You can see how the northern hemisphere here is receiving all of this light. So during the summer in the north, June, July, and August, the summer in the northern hemisphere is receiving all the light, and that means that Antarctica is actually in total darkness. So the seasons are opposite. So that's important to keep in mind as we're talking about life in Antarctica. Just in the southern hemisphere. And finally, we're back to the autumn equinox again. The word equinox comes from the Latin words for equal and night, equinox. The final part of the story is that the Earth's orbit is not perfectly circular. In fact, the Earth's orbit is rather eccentric and elliptical, and during the northern summer, the Earth is furthest away from the Sun at 152 million kilometres, as opposed to 147 million kilometres during the winter, when it's closest to the Sun. So, this may seem like a small detail, but this is actually really important for us as we're understanding Antarctica. So, what they just explained is that during the northern summer, June, July, and August, when Antarctica is completely dark, the Earth is actually furthest away from the sun at this point. So not only is Antarctica dark, but it's also very far away from the sun. At this point, it's the furthest that the sun ever is from the, sorry, the furthest that the Earth ever is from the sun. So this makes temperatures get very, very cold. And this is what makes the South Pole in the winter colder than the North Pole in the winter. So let's finish the video. So you can see that the Earth's axis is tilted in the same direction all year round. The seasons are caused by the sun's energy hitting the northern or southern hemisphere more directly as it orbits the sun on its tilted axis. So that's what causes the seasons. Okay, let's clear out of that, and we'll go back to our PowerPoint. Okay. So, as you've seen in the video, Antarctica does not receive a lot of sunlight during certain times of the year. During the winter months in particular, June, July, and August, the sun almost never comes above the horizon. You'll have 24 hours of darkness. But at the same time, during summer, December, January, and February, you'll have 24 hours of daylight. So this is why researchers always do their, do their work in Antarctica during the summertime. But keep in mind that that's the summertime for Antarctica, which means that it's December, January, and February. I know, it's, it's really hard to remember, but just think about how Antarctica, because it's in the southern hemisphere, has opposite seasons as what we have here in Saudi. So a third and final reason that Antarctica is very cold is because of its color. Being almost totally covered with ice, Antarctica is very white. All of this white ice reflects sunlight back into space. Here you can see an image of Antarctica from space, and as you can see, it's mostly a white continent. So what does color have to do with it? Well, think of it this way. Here in Saudi, men and women have different traditional dress. Men wear the white thobe, whereas women wear black abayas. We know this very well. But think about it. Which one keeps you cooler in the summertime when it's sunny and hot? Of course, 
the white thobe that the men get to wear. This is because white color reflects sunlight, whereas dark colors just absorb sunlight. So let's give our Saudi lady a fan so that she can stay cool. It's hot underneath that abaya. So back in Antarctica, Antarctica is a continent covered with white ice. So this means that when the sunlight does reach Antarctica, a lot of the solar energy is reflected back out into space, so it stays colder. So to summarize, there are three reasons that Antarctica gets so cold. First, Antarctica is located very far away from the equator. So the effect of this is that the sunlight here is not as strong because it's less direct. When the sunlight isn't as strong, it stays colder. The second is that Earth is tilted as it rotates around the sun. So the effect of this is that Antarctica receives less sunshine during the winter when the Earth is furthest away from the sun. And finally, ice, which is white, reflects sunlight. So just like the men who get to wear the thobe, much of the solar energy that reaches Antarctica is reflected back into space. So Antarctica doesn't warm up from any of the sun that it receives. It stays cold. So in your notes, you have something that looks like this. So you can fill in some of these answers. So the question is, why does Antarctica get so cold? And the answer is that it receives less sunlight, especially during the winter months. And the sunlight that it does receive, ice reflects that solar energy back into space. Another thing to know about Antarctica is that it's a very dry continent. Each year, it only receives about two inches of rain or snow, any type of precipitation, each year. So this is what makes it a desert biome, since it receives so little precipitation. Now, sometimes students um, who I've had in seventh grade in the past think of a desert as a place that doesn't have any people because we think about the deserts in Saudi Arabia as being hot and dry and not having any people. But and Antarctica also admittedly doesn't have a lot of people. But what makes a desert a desert is the fact that it's very dry. And of course, in places that are very dry, it's very difficult to live. So it's important to remember that for living things, surviving in Antarctica is very hard. And we're going to see this as we go through this chapter, that conditions uh, in Antarctica are very difficult. And of course, this makes it difficult for scientists to conduct research as well. Now, in this chapter, we're going to be talking about ice a lot. So to help us out, we want to define some vocabulary. We've already talked about glaciers. And in the, a future assignment, as I said, you'll see how glaciers move. An ice stream is a fast moving section of a glacier. Ice streams look like this. The ice is actually flowing. Here's another picture. You can see kind of how the ice has moved down the mountain. A second vocabulary term that we need to understand is ice cap. An ice cap is a climate or a climate zone that is very cold all year with permanent ice and snow. So Antarctica is an ice cap. So here are some images. You can see it's an area that is totally covered with ice, it's freezing, it's covered with ice all year round. And finally, our last vocabulary term is an ice shelf. An ice shelf is a large floating sheet of ice that's attached to the coast. Ice shelves can extend out to sea for hundreds of miles or hundreds of kilometers. So ice shelves look like this. It's an area you can imagine that um, this is actually not on top of the continent. There's no land here. It's just the ice extending out over the water. But sometimes this ice can be very, very thick. So here's an image where the ice shelves aren't exactly thick. This is because ice shelves are melting. And in later sections in this chapter, we'll talk about how ice shelves might be melting in Antarctica and how that might be evidence of global warming. So now you know all about Antarctica. So thank you for watching the video and thank you for doing your homework. I hope this lecture will help you to better understand what's going on in class. If you have any questions, please ask Ms. Liesel or Ms. Seema in class.